Greetings YouTube, Joe here with Culination Media and welcome back to another episode of Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. This is episode number 96 and in this episode uh, we're finally getting out of the volcanic area. I know I said we were going to do that in the last episode but we just defeated all the necessary trainers. We didn't exactly get out of the uh, lower parts of the volcano but now we're up on this cliff area after accessing uh, that elevator and uh, what you want to do here is go to the right first and although it seems like it goes nowhere eventually after a couple of rotations back and forth uh, you will be able to go uh, onto a second platform a moving platform that will take you back down to the volcanic area uh, into a like a secret room that we could not get into before and there's a item chest right there and that item chest will yield you two max potions so whether or not you feel like that's worth it you might want to go pick this up if not I wouldn't worry about it it's not that important but I figured I should just show it because I'm all about showing as much as I can and all that good stuff you guys know how I do yeah I'm pretty much the uncoolest person ever anyway let's not talk about that let's get back to the game here alright so we're gonna have a couple of trainers coming up um, but Let's see, uh, just taking a look at my TMs here, I wanted to teach a bunch of them to my Pokemon, but I never got around to it. So first of all, I'm going to teach Sunny Day to Ninetales, and I'm actually going to get rid of Dig, even though that's Ninetales' only non-Fire type move, um, because, mostly because Ninetales really doesn't need Dig, he only uses uh, Fire type moves anyway, and even when it's uh, not very effective, I go for the Fire type move anyway, so I might as well teach him sunny day and then I'm gonna teach Flygon a solar beam and this is important because I don't have any Pokemon that know uh, grass type moves other than I think Crobat's uh, Giga Drain so without having a grass type Pokemon it's a good idea to bring solar beam that will uh, give Flygon an ability to work well with uh, Ninetales and the same thing with Flamethrower now that Flygon knows Flamethrower uh, he will also be able to of course um, defend against pesky ice type Pokemon especially with solar beam as well even though uh, grass isn't super effective on ice a lot of these Pokemon that will use ice type attacks on uh, Flygon are actually water type so uh, but in addition to that flamethrower will also play a role um, in activating Ninetales' flash fire ability so when they're teaming together um, I will be able to raise Ninetales' um, firepower I, I couldn't think of the word there. Oh well, that happens to me a lot. I go brain dead randomly. Alright, well we might as well test out this new team combination here. Why not? Alright, here we go. Gorgeously I make my entrance. With flowing elegance, I battle. I don't know if that's exactly going to be the case, but we'll find out. Cypher Peon Jamie. Finally, someone with a normal name. And this is going to work out just well because... Both of her starting Pokemon are weak to fire. So we have uh, Roselia, the grass and poison type, and Yanma, the bug and flying type. And, well, the levels aren't that bad at 39 and 37, um, but this is going to be a fairly easy battle. So, let's see. We're going to go for a flamethrower with Flygon on Yanma, and that's able to knock it out in one hit. Yanma doesn't have a lot. Uh, in the way of defending itself at all, really. Both of its defensive stats are fairly lacking. Um, and that didn't really change until it got an evolution in Generation 4. And the defenses were still kind of on the lower side, but at least they were a little bit better than uh, what Yanma has. Alright, so Ninetales is going to pull off a flamethrower as well. This time on Roselia, and that's going to knock it out in one hit very easily. So we avoided uh, potentially getting poisoned or put to sleep there, or even paralyzed. Roselia is very dangerous when it comes to status conditions. Smeargle and Vileplume are the replacement Pokemon. So we have another Grass type that is weak to Fire. Then we have Smeargle, who obviously is only weak to Fighting types, but it's very unpredictable with its moveset. So in this turn, uh, we're actually not going to pull an attack off. We're going to raise uh, Ninetales' accuracy and then uh, increase its firepower by using Flamethrower with Flygon on Ninetales. Smeargle went for the ingrain there, so that kind of works uh, in our favor because we're going to one-shot it anyway. And then Petal Dance from Vileplume doesn't do a whole lot of damage to Flygon, and we're able to recover some of that back uh, with a Leftovers item that Flygon is holding. 
Uh, now the rest of this battle is going to go by very quickly because Heat Wave is going to hit every turn. All right, so Dragon Breath on Smeargle. Uh, just because... Oh, dang, that did a lot of damage. Was not expecting it to do that much. Uh, but I was worried uh, as to whether or not Heat Wave would actually knock out Smeargle. Even with the uh, fire boost, the fire power boost, you never know. Stranger things have happened. But apparently that was going to knock him out anyway, so I guess it doesn't matter. Heat Wave knocks out both Smeargle and Vileplume. And uh, I think she has one more, yes. Altaria is the last Pokemon on her team. It's a Dragon and Flying type Pokemon. Obviously it has a four times weakness to Ice. It's also weak uh, two times, that is, against uh, Rock and also Dragon. And as for attacking Altaria without one of those super effective types, I suggest using physical moves because Altaria's special defense is much higher than its physical defense is, but unfortunately, um, Ninetales only has the option of using fire type moves now, so that's what we're going to go with. After the Dragon Breath and the Flamethrower, Altaria goes down, and that's going to be the end of this battle. That's it for Cypher Peon Jamie. One of the few characters in this game that has a normal name. Kind of ridiculous. Alright. Let's check out our Pokemon here. And because Ninetales grew up to level 47, I'm going to switch him out. And uh, we'll bring in Agron. So we'll do Agron and Flagon for the next battle. The next uh, battle is completely optional, and it's only if you decide to go get this item. If you don't go get this item, you don't have to worry about fighting this battle. But... It's kind of a good item to grab. Three rare candies. Then on your way back throughout the loop, uh, you will be stopped by Mr. Macho Man here, jumping down from the ceiling. And we'll get thrown into a battle. Cypher Peon, Gromlet. Yes, his name is really Gromlet. Bonnet and Sableye are his starting Pokemon, so obviously he likes ghost types. We have a ghost and dark type, and then just a pure ghost type in Bonnet. And, of course, we're going to start off with Flygon and Agron. Neither of these ghosts has the um, Levitate ability, so we're going to go and open with an Earthquake. So we'll do Protect with Agron, and then we'll unleash the beast with Flygon's Earthquake. That's going to knock out Bennett in one hit. Bennett doesn't have a lot of uh, physical defense. In fact, most Ghost-type Pokemon do not have very good uh, physical defense at all. Um, and... That's largely in part to the fact that they don't really need it. Uh, they're already immune to normal and fighting type attacks. Uh, so uh, I guess how they make up for that is by not having a lot of physical defense. Dusclops is next, another ghost type Pokemon. And then the fourth Pokemon in this battle is going to be Crobat. So obviously Crobat's not a ghost type. doesn't necessarily follow the uh, trend, but uh, I guess they were just running out of ghost types to use. They would have to use one from the uh, Ghastly line. But they didn't want to do that. All right. Air Cutter. I mean, I guess they could have used Mistrevious. I forgot about that. But Oh, well. Air Cutter does exactly one HP worth of damage on Agron, which is sad. But that's what you get for using Air Cutter. Come on. That's why I didn't teach uh, Crobat Air Cutter to begin with. I don't want to have to attack both Pokemon with a move that has to split 55 uh, base power. Not worth it. I'd rather concentrate all 60 base power from a wing attack on one Pokemon if necessary. All right, Rock Tomb doesn't take out Crobat there. And as you can see, the levels are really jumping uh, on these Pokemon. Dusclops is up to level 40. Uh, so before you know it, uh, we're going to be pretty even. And uh, we also have a boss battle coming up soon. And I don't know if we're going to get to it in the next episode. Uh, it'll be in the next two episodes. So it's going to be another Cypher Admin. All right, Splagon's going to go for Dragon Breath on Crobat and gets a critical hit, but I'm pretty sure that was going to knock him out anyway. And as you notice, uh, the level of that Crobat, level 44. So uh, if we thought Dusclops was high at level 40 there, uh, things have definitely jumped a little bit uh, just because I think it was the last episode we were fighting Pokemon that, or maybe not last episode, I don't remember. One of the last couple of episodes. <laughs> We'll just go with that as Flygon goes up to level 47 here. Uh, we were fighting Pokemon that were at level like 34, 35, uh, but now they've jumped almost 10 full levels. Whale Lord is at level 44 and is dangerous here because uh, Aggron is weak to water and uh, Flygon is weak to ice, and Whale Lord has a good chance of knowing an ice type move. Uh, so we're going to go for an Earthquake here. We'll protect with Aggron and uh, 
Earthquake takes away about three-fourths of its HP, but thankfully Wellord is kind of stupid here and goes for a Mist. Uh, although, I'm pretty sure that it was going to go for a Waterfall or something like that on Agron anyway, had it used one of its attacks. Alright, so, we're going to finish off this Wailord, hopefully before it gets a chance to attack. We'll go for a Dragon Breath with Flygon, and that is going to finish it off. Wailord doesn't have a lot in the way of uh, defenses, but its HP is just massive, so uh, it does turn it into an incredible tank. Alright, I love that plus 5 from Agron's defense there as he grows up to level 47. That's just freaking awesome. Agron's defense is ridiculous. You're so much stronger than I expected. You've put the fear in me. Alright. Your name is Gromlet. You'd be afraid of anything. Alright, so... Looks like we have uh, Crobat and Zaprong who are not at level 47 out of everyone. Uh, so we'll switch those two to the front. And let them get some action, because they need some experience here. Alright, so over here is going to be an item chest with one PP max. And what that does is it's pretty much uh, the same effect as using um, three PP ups, or however many PP ups uh, you end up, you could use on any um, particular move. I don't know why I couldn't get that out, I'm just tripping over my words here. Um, but whatever the max amount of PP any particular move can have, uh, that's what PP Max automatically uh, puts it up to. Alright, email from Egan. Clonation, I hope you are well. I've been keeping well too. I have a message from my partner, Pika Biga. From the both of us, we hope for your success. And that's the last email that we're going to receive from Egan. Thankfully, because I'm kind of tired of his haiku poems and encouraging messages, because I don't give a crap about your stupid Pikachu. Just leave me alone, Santa. Seriously. Alright, so this item on the right here, we can't get that by uh, using that orange crane. Uh, what we actually need to do is fall uh, through a hole in the ceiling in the next floor and fall directly on top of it, pretty much, uh, in order to grab that item. So we'll be doing that a little bit later on. Uh, it's nothing to get all worked up over. It's nothing uh, exciting. It's not a, that great of an item, but uh, I will be showing you how to get it. Alright, so, three timer balls in that chest right there, which will come in handy for the final battle, uh, because that battle just goes on forever, especially if you're trying to capture all the Shadow Pokemon at once, which is what I'm going to do, uh, because there's... I don't want to give anything away for people who have not uh, played through this game, but uh, there are quite a few uh, Shadow Pokemon at the end that you have to catch all at once, and uh, because the battle will draw on for so long, timer balls can come... Uh, in handy. Like, a crazy amount of handiness. Alright, so, Cypher Peon Gift Hall? Uh, that, that's just too strange for me to pronounce. Alright, so he's gonna start out with two electric type Pokemon. Both of them are dual types, however. We have Magneton, who is uh, part steel type as well, and Lantern, who is part water type. Uh, both of these Pokemon are at level 41, so the levels are pretty much permanently in the 40s. Uh, they may occasionally dip, dip down back into uh, like 39, but I. Pretty sure most of them are going to stay in the 40s now. So just get used to it. Alright, so this guy only has three Pokemon, uh, which is kind of unusual. Most of the trainers that we've been fighting up until this point have had four, usually five, actually. Um, but unfortunately for Crobat, uh, since we don't have a Poison-type move just yet, he'll, he will be learning one uh, soon. But uh, we're going to have to go with uh, Shadow Ball or Giga Drain on Lantern in order to do any damage. So we went for Psychic there uh, with Electabuzz to deal some damage to Lantern. Uh, but Crobat gets hit by a Thunder and somehow survives it with Lantern's amazing uh, special attack. I don't understand how Crobat tanked that, but he did. And uh, I'm not going to complain, but it's just kind of crazy. And then Lantern, being the idiot that he is, well, I guess it's not Lantern's fault, it's the Cypher Peon's fault, but he went for a Shockwave on Zaprog, which is retarded. He could have easily killed Crobat uh, if he used it on Crobat. I don't understand why he did it. Maybe he was just banking on the fact that Thunder would have killed him in one hit. I mean, I guess I kind of would have too, but using Shockwave on an Electric-type Pokemon this late in the game is just, there's no excuse for it. All right, well, with... Um, Giga Drain from Crobat, Lantern finally bites the dust after taking three hits. And then we have one that doesn't fit the pattern here, the normal type, uh, Kanto Region native, Lickitung. That's right, Lickitung is a shadow Pokemon. 
kind of sad, uh, but he is a Shadow Pokemon, and he does have pretty decent attack and uh, pretty good special defense as well, so uh, he can be kind of a chore to whittle down and fight against if you are not careful. Alright, Magneton went for the Reflect there. It's actually a pretty uh, smart move, um, especially because I don't really have anything to damage Magneton here at all. Because of that Steel type, and it resists almost everything, um, I think literally every move that I have between the two of these Pokemon, uh, Magneton will resist. So I'm either going to have to wait until Crobat dies and you know, bring someone else out, or just get lucky. I don't know. Thunder Punch does a decent amount of damage there. Even though it's not very effective, uh, Electabuzz does have a pretty good uh, special attack rating. He's also holding the Magnet, so Thunder Punch is going to do some damage. Metal Sound on Crobat harshly lowers his special defense, which at this point I don't understand why he would go for that. He could just easily kill it with another Thunder, but who knows what the AI is thinking at this point. Now we have Lickitung weakened down into the yellow range. Um, so, uh, we should be able to capture him soon, but not quite yet. We're going to go for a wing attack on Magneton. I need to get this thing off the field, uh, because it's just... It's been on the field too long. If it does get another Thunder off, uh, Crobat's going to be gone. But we get lucky here with a critical hit, and that's going to take Magneton out. So, now we just have to deal with this Lickitung. And it likes to use Shadow Rush which actually can do a pretty decent amount of damage, um, considering Lickitung does have fairly decent uh, physical attack, as I mentioned. Um, yeah, alright. Well, that's enough of that. We're going to confuse Lickitung. Oh, he has the own tempo ability. I forgot about that. Ah, darn it. I knew I was missing something, but normally I go into the Pokemon special ability, and I didn't this time. And obviously it bit me in the butt. So with the own tempo ability, uh, Lickitung cannot be confused by any means, so don't use Supersonic or Confuse Ray or even Shadow Panic. It's not going to work. All right, we did uh, get him paralyzed with the Thunder Wave, and I don't know if he's going to be at a low enough HP to stay in this Ultra Ball, but I'm going to give it a shot because it's kind of iffy. I don't necessarily want to hit him with another attack, though, because he's in that borderline range. And I guess it doesn't matter because he stays in the first Ultra Ball that we throw out. And that's going to be it for Geftal. Sweet. And that's also going to be the end of this episode. In the next episode, uh, we'll continue through this room. We have a couple more Shadow Pokemon to grab. And we'll probably get right up until uh, the next boss fight. And then we'll do that in the following episode. But thank you very much for watching. And please stay tuned for episode number 97. Game on.